If you enjoy a video game with a good backstory, look no further than The Elder Scrolls. Each game in this critically acclaimed fantasy series features hundreds of books, covering everything from origin stories to military conquests and even erotic fanfiction. There's a Tolkien-esque level of content to uncover, and it's no surprise that dedicated fans have spent years working tirelessly to piece together the history of The Elder Scrolls universe. Now, I've been an Elder Scrolls fan ever since I picked up Morrowind back in 2002, but I didn't really care about the backstory until much later. After all, I was 10, and Elder Scrolls history is pretty complex stuff. It wasn't until Skyrim that I really started paying attention, and once I did, I noticed something strange, a thread I knew I had to follow. What I didn't know was that I was on the cusp of a discovery that would change everything I knew about the Elder Scrolls. It happened around my hundredth hour in Skyrim. The librarian of the Mages College asked me to recover a stolen book, and of course I had to delve into a dangerous ruin to find it. Once I reached the chamber where the book was hidden, the thief who stole it rewarded my efforts with a fireball to my face. As I felt around for what remained of my eyebrows, or at least that's how I imagined it, I thought about how this all could have been avoided if the librarian had simply made copies of the book I was looking for. Was I really supposed to believe that in this world of magic and ancient technology, a printing press was too complex to manage? However, the more I thought about it, the more likely that seemed. In every Elder Scrolls game I'd played, books were extremely valuable, which presumably meant that they were difficult to reproduce. This made sense back when I played Morrowind, when I assumed the world's technology simply hadn't industrialized yet, but here I was in Skyrim over 200 years later, and practically nothing had changed. Society was still agrarian, most goods were still produced by hand, and I mean hell, people were still using bows and arrows instead of guns. Now admittedly, Tamrielic society is only about 7,000 years old, and it took our society almost 10,000 years to industrialize. It's also worth noting that industrialization is not some automatic process that all civilizations inevitably experience. That said, the citizens of Tamriel have some pretty crazy magic on their side, so you would think that over the hundreds of years between the games, at least some technological progress would have occurred. I was perplexed by this problem, so I took to the internet to find people smarter than me to help out. After a fair bit of research, I discovered a Reddit thread where someone else was asking why Tamriel hadn't industrialized, and a reply by a user named Merlin blew my fucking mind. See, according to Merlin, Tamriel isn't on its way up, it's on its way out. It's not on the cusp of technological acceleration because it's on the verge of technological collapse. In other words, it's post-apocalyptic. See, Tamrielic history is divided into four eras, and apparently the first of these four was a golden age, rife with advanced technologies, magic, and infrastructure. There were space stations on Tamriel's moons, a biological internet that connected all living creatures, and instantaneous travel for all via teleportation. Godlike figures built magnificent cities with powerful tools that could reshape the world on a whim, and Tamriel's politics were relatively stable for the first and pretty much only time in the world's history. Of course, all good things come to an end, and so it was with Tamriel when time literally fell apart in an event known as the Middle Dawn. In the simplest terms possible, the Middle Dawn was a split in Tamriel's timeline, where multiple threads branched off and reconnected a thousand years later, but the events of each were said to be true. How this is possible, no one really knows, but it happened, and as you can imagine, it really messed things up. This began Tamriel's second era, which according to our boy Merlin, was basically Europe after the fall of Rome. The empire collapsed, everyone went to war, and the world began to crumble. To make matters worse, Tamriel was simultaneously invaded by foreign soldiers and fucking demons. And though the living gods were still strong enough to fight back, they were quickly losing steam. There was a brief moment at the end of the Second Era where a man-turned-god named Tiber Septim began to turn things around, but nothing really came of it, and things continued to slide downwards. By the end of the Third Era, most of the super-awesome First Era technology had disappeared. Demons invaded in record numbers, an ancient dwarven robot reactivated and laid waste to the West, and perhaps most notably, the last living god died, causing a meteor formerly suspended by his magic to crash into the Earth, detonating the Red Mountain Volcano and decimating most of Morrowind. As you can imagine, by the events of Skyrim 200 years into the Fourth Era, things are worse than they've ever been. The Empire is basically a puppet regime after a costly war with the High Elves, Skyrim is wrapped up in its own civil war, and in case you didn't notice, there's also a bit of a dragon problem. Needless to say, most people are too busy trying to survive to worry about the advancement of technology. When all is said and done, the story of Tamriel is one of suffering. After all, it's been hit with so many cataclysmic events that it would be hilarious if it weren't so sad. However, before you throw down your sword and let Alduin mercy kill the world, I should remind you that things aren't all bad. For all its woe and strife, Tamriel has also played host to life and love, and I believe that a world capable of love is still worth saving. So get back out there, cowboy, and take down that dragon. And don't worry if you fail, because as we've learned, we're all going down anyway.
Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. And if you'd like to see more, just click the video thumbnails on the left. As always, see you next time on Belmont Boy.